Um, just to recollect where we left off last week, um, Krishna was talking about the nature of Brahman, Sat, Chit, and Anandam. And Swami was explaining how even us, in some, in many different ways, all human beings also exhibit these qualities. Then he goes on to say that Krishna took avatar to demonstrate this and teach Arjuna through his own example, how the Jivatma and Paramatma are one. And I think that's where we were, uh, how whether, I think we discussed whether Krishna, the avatar, whether he was Parabrahmam or Atyatma. And um, so those were the discussions last week. So I will stop here and I will ask uh, Sister Kalyanji to continue on, Saira. Take this instance. A child is in the cradle. It playfully laughs at either the jingling of bells or some toy or perhaps some sensation which is pleasant enough to make it bloom. No one is surprised or worried at all of this. No one loses his peace of mind as a result of this. Now let the child that was playing and laughing start shrieking and weeping. Everyone within earshot will run toward the cradle and frantically search the bed and bedclothes to discover the cause of all this commotion. This is the experience of all who have something to do with children. No one was worried to find out the reason why the child was happy, but all sought for the cause when it wept. Why? Because ananda, or joy, <coughs> is its nature. Grief is unnatural against its inner composition. This is not the entire point. There is something more. Let us take another example from this experience. When some friend or kinsman of yours is happy and affluent, no one takes the trouble to inquire from him, why is he so happy? They ignore him and do not harry him with questions regarding himself. But when grief strikes him and he is unhappy, you start worrying him and yourselves. Why? Natural happiness is natural. It is to be expected. It is nothing surprising. For the nature of the Atma, which everyone is. That is why one is craving for constant happiness, Ananda. The above three, Sat, Chit, and Ananda, we see in every being as the core of its existence, as its reality itself. So it is the Lord himself who has assumed the Jiva pose and plays as an individual in that role. It is this inner meaning that Krishna elaborated upon, so that the relationship of the Brahman and Adhyatman, that is to say, the identity of both with him, could be understood by Arjuna. Thank you very much, Kalyani. Um, so we have, we have read and discussed this. I will just open it up for anyone who would like to share any thoughts or comments. Uh, Saira. I think if everyone is okay, we will, why don't we proceed? And Arjuna prayed that the third subject, karma, may be fully explained to him. Krishna was quite ready to oblige him. He began, Arjuna, the limitation that is necessary for the creation, fostering, and destruction of beings is what is called karma. The movable and the immovable, all are beings. Why the very act of the re very resolution of creation is karma. The very first which still activates all everywhere, this entire universe, and all the movements and agitations and activities in it are the direct consequence of primal karma, my sankalpa, divine will. And as long as my resolution lasts, 
the stream of karma will flow along. It can never go dry so long as I do not will it. All that you do is to get drawn into this flood. Why, you are but currents in this rush or ripples or waves. My will has prompted all karma. And so karma done in consonance with my will becomes part of me. Thank you very much, Kalyan. Um, so Krishna is uh, talking about what karma is. And uh, I, do, I would just leave it open for every, anyone to share any thoughts. Uh, yes. Is it Telugu? Telugu? Yeah, the sentence, yes. Arjuna, the limitation that is necessary for the creation, fostering the destruction of beings is what is called karma. What limitation it is here? What does Krishna? I don't know what, I don't know. Telugu, <laughs> we have to read Telugu until to understand. Yeah. I will read out the Telugu so that we can make out some. Atharvata Arjunudu Mudavadaina Karma Vishayamanu Telpumani Pratinchinadu. So thereafter, uh, Arjuna uh. asked Krishna to explain what the third one is. Bhava, Bhuta Mulastiti Utpati ki Karna Maina Tyagame Karma Anubadunu. Oh, that is why limitation is Tyaga. I, I think so, yeah, but I don't know whether Tyaga can be translated. As limitation. Bhuta Mulastiti Utpati ki Karna Maina Tyagame Karma Anubadunu. So, Swami is telling the 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 cause of the original creation mm. is uh, karma. Is it right, Auntie? Tyagame, karma na tyagame karma mu. I see. Who is doing tyaga here while creating? Yes. The Lord. Karma na tyagame. So uh, I think karma. I think in this case we can say what was offered. Mm. You know what the Lord offered. You know uh, what he, as creation. What creation. I think that's the way we can say, consider it offering. Mm. Next line. So I, so what, what would you say is that full sentence then? See, Swami is telling karma is the the effort or you know what you offer as part of creation itself. That is what is called karma. Stiti utpati ki. Stiti utpati. Birth and uh, yes. I mean for the creation and besides destruction. Stiti, stiti, stiti means their uh, existence only. Existence. Okay. But I think fostering. I think the translation says fostering. Uh, Utpati is a creation. Creation. Karana maina tyagame karma anubadu no. So the effort or you know what what is offered. I think I think tyaja, you know, tyaga means sacrifice. You know, I think we can also look at it as uh, a sacrifice. May, maybe is... next sentence may, might give us clear. Yet, okay. Chara charatma kamaina vastu laniyo bhuta muleka. So all the movable and immovable things are all bhutas. Bhuta is element here. Yeah. Yeah. Ve Elements. Veyeti ki. Uh, by thousands. The creation of all these is the real karma. Bhagavat Sankalpa me karma pravaha rupa muna pravahinsu sunnadi. It's God's will which continues to flow as the karma, the flow of karma. That original will of mine is the seed, the original seed for all this karma. Sankalpa menta kala munduno, antavarku karma pravahamu, pravahinsu sunane unduno. As long as that will remains, 
the karma the flow of karma will continue to flow adi end povuttuko veela ledu that uh, cannot go dry there is no it's not possible for it to go dry the flow Lok- of karma lokamuna manamu cheyi prati karmayu ee maha pravahamulo antarbhagame whatever karma which all of us do is is a small minute element minute part of this flow of karma srishti sankalpa roopamaina karmame samasta bhutamala srishti sthiti layamanaku karanamainadi the cause srishti sankalpa for the creation mm-hmm. uh, the, the the divine will for the creation itself became the reason for creation sustenance and destruction baba intela ishwar arpita buddhi tho cheyu prati chinna karmayu paramatma swarupamai povuchunnadi so any any small action undertaken as uh, an offering to the lord will be yeah. in, in line with the divine will yeah anupchu karma swarupanu bodhinchunu Uh, in the form of the lord of karma taught like this here i think what uh, tyaga is here um, while the cre- creation and the creation took place it's it's a tyaga karma yes that's the swami uh-huh. see i think aunty you know what swami is saying is hmm. or anything which is offered you know tyaga is sacrifice so you know whatever we renounce or whatever we give up even that offering is, that itself uh, so that's what the lord did so that's what we have also have to do for it to be part of the same flow of karma i think that's the way i understand the lord himself or the lord himself gave something up as for the creation sake and um, so that's what has made it happen what 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 did he sacrifice that's the question you ask actually he sacrificed himself yeah the right. lord actually has sacrificed offered it is entire self into this creation so that's why the creation from, from the form of nirguna brahma he took the form of saguna brahma with the help of maya to create this thing so he had to come down from his uh, high position of that uh, nirguna brahma yeah because the, after all the creation is him yeah. so he basically offered himself, himself. as the creation creation that uh, maybe that is the reason yeah so i think the lord offered him for everything the creation to exist um i think that's the way i would understand and that is the original sankalpa mm. and original will and that's what has given rise to the flow of karma yeah. and so swami says when we also do the same thing it will become a part of his own you know karma flow of karma flow of karma that's the way i understand this so for doing any karma there must be a sacrifice part of it which goes into that action yeah, yeah. so swami saying ishvara arpita buddhi to cheyu prati chinna karya karmayu paramatma swarupa mai povuchundi so they actually swami is telling each a minute action which we do with an offer as an offering to the lord will become paramatma himself you know so that's what swami is saying it will become the lord part of it part of me paramatma swarupamai povachun hmm. so you know um, becomes part of me is what i think the way translation hmm. goes hmm. swami says it will become paramatma itself the act will become paramatma yes paramatma swarupamai povachunnadi povachunnadi yes. means to become it becomes it becomes it begos if you want povachunnadi <laughs> you know um yeah so i think what swami is saying is that's what the lord did you know i think the action the material the person cause all is god so the same way every action of ours also will become that i think you know this is the brahmarpana mantra itself you know yeah, i think uh, so. brahmaiva tena gantavyam brahma karma samadhina 
which is what Swami is uh, explaining here. The word li limitation caused a little bit of uh, confusion. Yeah, I think it should be said, you know, I think that has just completely changed the meaning itself, mm. limitation. It is Tyaga. So basically the, the Lord offered something, offered himself yeah. uh, into this create for the creation, for the sake of creation. And that's what has caused. And then Swami says, if we also offer, have the same offering to the Lord, then that becomes part of the Lord himself. And uh, we can take it this way also. The limitation is caused by Maya for the creator. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that's the way the translator has, seems but, to have been, uh, but I don't think that Swami has mentioned that. Yeah. Sthiti utpati ki means fostering. No, utpati means for the creation, no, for something to come into being is utpati. Utpati is creation. Oh, and sthiti means existence or fostering. fostering. Uh, maybe sthiti is can be taken yes. as state you know what with which remains you know something like that stays in one place that is sthiti or your state sthiti uh, can be taken as um, mm. uh, srishti sthiti yes. yeah srishti creation sustenance sthiti. Taken yeah, as sustenance. As sustenance. See, srishti sthiti layam you know these are the three portions sorry auntie mm. um, sthiti is, should, should be taken as uh, sustenance sustenance is that is the call what is called the um, karma is that the, is right in the telangu too is that the um, creation fostering destructions are being karma yes. yeah yeah that is an action or karma karma is action yes action. but we we look at it karma word differently right so that's why swami is fixing the problem here um, okay <laughs> so things for uh, karma aruna what do, you, what do you think, Sister, karma is? I think then we should discuss that. What is karma? Yeah. yeah. It's it's out of uh, what whatever we do, out of our action, it comes karma, right? So now we are saying, uh, according to here, um, these creation fostering destruction of the Lord is called karma. So the based on the context, the meaning is slightly different. That's how I am looking at it. It's a creation point of view. Karma, I always believe based on our action. You, uh, yeah, based on your actions, whatever punya, papa, whatever. You yes, are, but you here the Lord's uh, way of looking at it, at it is a karma. That Lord action called karma, right? Uh, that is action, right? What is creation, fostering? That I'm just thinking. Thank you, Sairam. Okay, thank you. Yes, brother Dasan. So, Sairam, brother. So the creation or destruction and destroy is under karma. Even words, thoughts, deeds are karma. Even the uh, God's thoughts, he wants to create these uh all these whatever we are seeing that is karma too so whatever because of his thought only this uh, uh the world is created so that come under karma so we are divine sparkle so we also doing part of the karma everything goes to him because creation happened from him so we are doing the karma it also goes to the creator. Thank you, Saira. Saira. Brother, try to we'll try to understand what is this karma, please. See, Swami is saying that the first part, the creation itself is the original karma. Everything which happens, so once that karma switch is turned on. It's the karma continues to flow. So once something is created, that will stay for some time and that will again merge. Again, it will be created, it will stay and it will merge. So it's a continuously cyclical process which continues as long as the original will of creation took place. So that is the original action. 
but then what happens is as part of that action there are minute minute actions which takes place in this world uh, even in the, uh, i think the trees grow seeds fall then they grow uh, their fruits come then they die all this continues i am just giving one example so in in this nature everything is undergoing this circular cyclical process that is part of creation okay so we are also adding to that bit with our own actions just like animals are doing the trees are doing uh, so many things are doing in this world everything created is doing some action yes so krishna will say if you just stay put in without doing anything also that's also action so that is a contribution towards this overall action of god now the i think then the thing is if we contribute any action which we are doing with that uh, ishwar arpitam as an offering to the lord that becomes part of god that becomes part of god yeah so then the question is uh, what is our action you know you said uh, generally we think we do an action then see many people ask this question i think that is a fundamental flaw in the theory of karma we you know basically somebody will say i am suffering um so i am born today and they, they people say that because of some karma i did in the past so i am suffering okay um so the thing is so when was the original karma which i created did that's the question everyone ask is if we have come from god then what went wrong that we are suffering today okay that's the question for everyone because we think whatever we experience some of the things which we experience we think is bad because of some bad action this is the reality okay but in the world there are two things which are going which go go on in this world one is the original creation by god will continue whether you contribute anything or not that will continue to go on and on but the thing is if we do an action and we think we 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 get attached to that and we attach to the fruits of that action then it becomes ours then you suffer we suffer because we have an expectation generally our expectations are worldly related then we suffer but the thing is a jnani or somebody will say i am born as a child i mean this body the body will grow it will grow old uh, it will uh, you know have some disease it may be healthy sometimes they will say that is all part of the original creation that cycle of creation will go on but the problem is one day we will say no we don't want to grow old that means we are going counter to the natural law of everything which is created is going growing old so what swami is telling is if we offer that also as part of god i am why growing old is also the lord it is part of you i offer that also to you so then it then um, then it becomes part of brahma okay so the solution for us is uh, to detach ourselves from the results of the action okay yes. which is what the whole thing krishna is teaching okay, okay. the whole problem for human beings is we want something and for that we do something and then what happens sometimes it will pass sometimes it will fail so we suffer but a person who offers everything to the lord without worrying about the outcome will be happy all the time because he'll think it's a divine leela this is what krishna is telling wow yes now clear thank you so much sir so i i last other to share um, auntie you want to say something auntie yeah <clears throat> the childhood has to be sacrificed to become an adult adulthood has to be sacrificed for to become an old 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 age has to be sacrificed for the sake of death <laughs> so just like you know the previous uh, these things we have to sacrifice to get on to the next stage that's so swami is saying that you know tyaga only tyag tyage ne kena we we have to manushu so um so swami here is saying that uh, he he sacrificed himself lord sacrificed himself to become this 
creation. That is, I think that's meaning it, Tyaga here. Sairam. Uh, is it okay? Sorry. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just wanted to add to what Auntie and Anna were saying. Um, so this statement of uh, I have separated myself from my, myself mm. so that I may love myself mm. is a testimony to that ultimate sacrifice or that separation that happened what auntie was telling earlier as nirguna brahman becoming saguna brahman so it is that aspect of um, separation that happened and so when we have this ishwara with the buddhi then it is uh, it is that I'm not having that ex exact wordings in Telugu auntie. Swami would say, Mahini dan, arpintu that, that love that you have given me, oh God, I'm offering it back unto you. That's what uh, that, yeah, that's uh, what tel is. that Telugu <laughs> thing, uh, that couplet, I, I don't remember. But the okay. essence is um, that Ishwara, Ishwara Arpita Bhuddhi is to offer it back like Swami would say, Tasmai Namaha Karmani, it is to bow down to that action with reverence and treat it with that thing of offering to Bhagwan, which culminates, which the cycle of that whole thing becomes complete because it is out of that infinite love that the creation came out of that creator. And now it is out of that infinite love that's, that's that creation which is performing its action to go back to the creator. So that part of separation now goes back to being in union, which culminates that whole thing of karma. And what Anna was saying also, we have like three things of nijam, satyam, and rhythm. Mm -hmm. While nijam is fact and satyam is truth, rhythm is the ultimate truth. So while nijam, and satyam can change. Like today, it is winter, it's sunny outside, but it can change. Likewise, satyam also has a limitation in terms of the yugas, but rhythm is ultimate. That is one being established as the Atman, that is the Paramatman coming as Jivatman and Jivatma going back to Paramatma. That will at no point in time change. So what Anna was saying, if we are established in that and perform action, then karma doesn't touch us because the law of karma comes only when you are separated from that created creator. If you are in union with the creator, then no karma can touch. That is being at the level of rhythm. Then one is one with the creator. So where is karma playing? It starts coming only when there is separation and so if we do that karma with all focus and love for offering it back to God, then again, it is going back to union. So every time it is done, that separation gets nullified and you go back to being one with God. So the idea, the whole effort of the creation is to go back to the creator with that focus, which will then become the Ishwara Arpita Buddhi. Thank you very much, Sai Satish. Anyone else would like to say something? Swami is giving a new interpretation to this karma here. Uh, actually, uh, when we read uh, Adi Bhuta, Adi Daivika, Adi Yagna, and Karma. He introduces there, you know, that Karma. Karma is not only the mere action. The action uh, which is done with the creating ability which God has given to all of us. We have the talent that, to create anything. So that talent is also me, he says. 
in uh, Bhagavad Gita. The extraordinary uh, creating creative ability in each person is me. Is not uh, with that talent, with that uh, efficiency, he does his work. That efficient work which you do uh, with the help of your uh, ability to do that is that karma, he calls it. Saira. Saira, uncle, I, I think. I think you already explained it, but if you could explain again. So we, um, I think like uh, Brother Satish was saying, we, we had spoken about before about doing karma in a karma, um, how we should do karma without any attachment and from a state of um, being one with the Lord and that it becomes a karma. But yeah. here at the end, here's Swami saying karma swarupu. So like, um, like Krishna is karma swarupa <laughs> itself. So why isn't he saying Akarma Swarupa, like or... okay. See, the thing is, in the word akarma, the word karma exists. Okay, people generally may think, oh, akarma means there's no karma. No, karma exists, but you it's unattached. The Atman remains separate. Okay. Um, I think there's another place where I think Swami is explaining. So the karma will continue to go on. See, see, karma is part of the Lord. The is part of karma. Karma is part of the Lord, and but the Lord remains a karma. In the sense, it does not affect him. He is not affected by it. So that is the real karma. Jnani will do be it will be doing karma, but it's it's a completely parallel path if you want to put it that way. At least the mind is not stuck. Stuck. See, uh, so the thing is, mind doesn't think, oh, I am doing. Okay, the karma proceeds separately. The Atman is set, sitting separately. So that in the word akarma, there is akarma. Okay, but Swami is saying karma swarupa means his real form is karma swarupa. Okay, I think that's the question. Why is he not akarma? See, karma is there, swarupa is there. Swarupa is a okay karma is also there creation will exist see many people think everything will vanish everything will exist in this world okay it has always existed it may not be existing the way we see it that's the only difference uh, we see for example if pralaya comes only there's water and you know a human species is missing we'll think oh something has happened to the world in god's eyes no it is still there <laughs> but it is a cycle that's why in in pralaya is a cycle part of the creation so it's a circular movement okay if you took at one point and say why this happened god will say that's part of creation so the karma always exists akarma also continuously exists because the lord is independent of that that's my understanding i think we have discussed this you know uh, before also swami says when you don't attach to your results then you that you're performing akarma you know, you are, you are not attached. And at the same time, don't take up the kartrutva bhava. Don't take the ownership of the actions which are going on. They are going on. They will go on by itself, by themselves. But Atma is only a sakshi, sakshi bhava. He is sitting there and watching. All the actions will go on. And you don't take, we don't take the authorship of it or ownership of it. Sign up. Thank you very much, Auntie. So kind of like just like we say like swarupa and swabhava or para prakriti and apara prakriti there's karma and a karma like that but is there a difference between doing something as an offering because swami in the last part says ishvara sita buddhi and mm. then at the beginning he says tiaga is there a difference between tiaga and ishvara sita buddhi or is, are they the same I think Swami has used it in the same meaning, okay? Mm -hmm. Because Arpita is Tyaga. I think that is anti Sariya. Yeah, correct. In a, in English, I guess there's like a slightly different connotation for sacrifice versus an offering. But is there a difference or not? Yeah, you are sacrificing to offer. <laughs> <laughs> you are sacrificing something to offer him to. You are not getting 
any anything out of it you are offering it to the lord so it you are sacrificing hmm. iram brother so can we take it like this karma mean lord is the one doing everything all the actions we are nothing so it has to goes to him so whatever we discuss we are not supposed to think that we are the doer we are not supposed to take the fruit so all the actions everything even listening even talking even thinking everything to him it it's it's supposed to goes to him that's the reason we always uh we ask uh lord please use my body use my intellect use myself and for all the doing all the karmas thank you saira thank you brother And so I'm saying Bhuta Mula Stiti Utpati Ki. So Bhuta means like the world? Uh, elements, elements, beings, all. It covers okay. everything. Okay. Bhuta Mula, they're all, are they not elements? So it's Swami saying for the um, birth of the Bhutas, mm. the reason for that, the sacrifice that is the reason for the birth of the Bhutas is karma? Srishti Sankalpa me nijamaina karma. That's what he says. Next sentence. Srishti Sankalpa me nijamaina karma ni telusuko. Know that it will be the karma. The Sankalpa that caused Srishti? Srishti. Hmm. See, Swami has used the word Bhuta to cover everything. Because, you know, it covers the five elements because those were the first created that also came from the lord then the you know i think in sunday in varni we studied you know the one became two the two became three three became the five and everything else in this world is that panchi karna the five elements mixed uh, together permutations and combinations mixing and all that and that's how the sentient creation took place and through that living beings also came as part of that evolution you know the grass grew the trees grew the animals came the birds came the sea creatures came and the human being also came that's all that mi mixing and matching of these five elements and underneath all the brahman sustaining it all uh, so i think the bhuta covers everything uh, i don't think there's an one word in english which can equal that that's what charam acharam Mobile and immobile. Oh, so that would, oh, so, so I'm, that's why so I'm saying all the movable and immovable. Yeah, are all are beings. Yeah. Hada means like, isn't it? Or is that what that word means? Hada. Bhuta mulle kada. Yeah. Kada. Isn't it so? Isn't it isn't so? It? Okay. Is, is, are there at the same Bhutas elements? Kada means in Tamil, you say Ilya. Ilya. That's mm. it. Kada. When Swami saying that um, the sankalpa that caused Shristi is the nijamaina karma, um, like I can understand if that's the first karma, what, but Swami saying that's the real karma. So, so all the other actions that we do are they considered not real karma? No, no, no. Just it's a word used like that. It's nijamaina karma. Means I think in, in some sense, I think the way I understand the Kalyani is the Lord did not have any wish. So that was a perfect, complete, uh, well-rounded action. Okay. Our actions can have limitations. You know, it may be for one person or it may be for, you know, there are many things which limit that sankalpa. So God's sankalpa is, as Swami always says, Vajra sankalpa. It just happens. Nothing can stand in the way. There is human sankalpa because of the limitations of, you know, various mental aberrations that is limited. So it does not become, so it is a defective karma, you can say. So I think that's, uh, that's, that's what I understood. Uh, but, mm. 
So if we have a, a thought, then and, and like the, the less ego and the less desires that we attach to that, like it'll just happen more. It'd be more likely to be successful, I guess, or no, then you are not worried about the success of failure. <laughs> <laughs> when you have given up this idea of success or failure, all karma is fine. Because once you offer, then once you offer the success question doesn't arise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Swami would say like um, love is selflessness and self is lovelessness. So when one is in the absolute state of divine love, there is no self there. And when there is no self there, what flows out of that is pure divine will or what, like what Anna was saying, Swami says, Vajra Sankalpa, because it is not bound by any limitations of the self. And where the self exists, then it is bound by its limitations. It's far away from the divine love. So it gets, it has its karma phala and all of its expectation tagged along. And that is why it holds it back from attaining fruition because the expectation, more of energy is going into the expectation than into the karma itself. More of the whole process is lost in the expectation of the fruits of the action rather than on the action. But if you are with the action, with that state of divine love, then it leads to fruition because fruition is not expected from that action. Looks complicated, but yeah, but that is supposed to be, I think, the way of being established in divine love and selflessness. Thank you, Sai Satish. Any, any other thoughts? You know, it Swami has basically shifts, you know, our perception of what karma is. And once that happens, then everything which happened because of karma, but we will not be worried about it. You know, we should not be worried about it. Um, if we have made a mistake, of course, something will go wrong. So then you accept that also. Uh, you know, sometimes we can't help. So everything we just go along the way, but the mind is will be all completely thinking of the Lord and try to offer as much, everything as much as possible to the Lord. I think uh, because it's part of his, <clears throat> it's like, you know, that we all got into the train. The train is going. That is the original karma. But in the train, we have lots of choices. We can just relax and just enjoy the tra train ride. Or we can get up, walk here or there, the egg may he hurt, uh, we may lift some, you know, all that we do. But, but you know, if, if you don't do anything, we are just part of the journey, part of that Brahman. And whatever do actually part, become part of the train only. <laughs> so, so I think it's like that. Um, the more we relax, and enjoy the ride, uh, then it's part of the train. We are just part of the train. <laughs> so, so one more example, brother. If we take the electricity, we can do so many things. So that that electricity, we can think about Paramatma. Paramatma. Outcome, small small things. We can see other accents <laughs> of the. If we try to do something uh, abnormal, then we'll caught into the problems. So, and this is the way we caught into the karma too. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes we get shocks, electrocution, burn. Yes. That, if you don't know how to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I think we can move on if everyone is okay. Uh, Uncle, there's just one line. Um, I wrote it in English. It's the cause for creation becomes the reason for creation, preservation, destruction. 
I think it's Trishti Sankalpa Rupa Maina. Uh, so I think Karanam. See, Swami is saying, Shristi Sankalpa Rupa Maina Karma Ye, Samasta Bhuta Mula Shristi Stiti Lamulaku Karanam Ayinodi. Is that the sentence? Yes. Yeah. So Swami is saying, the Sankalpa for Shristi, the form of karma which results from the, uh, the, the will of the Lord for creation became the cause for the creation, sustenance, and dissolution of everything. Uh, Auntie, I will ask Auntie to. Uh, that is the Lord's karma. Karma which is in the form of Sritti Stiti Laya. Sritti Sankalpa. Yeah, Sritti Sankalpa. Yeah. The form of Sritti Sankalpa uh, which is karma. Samasta Bhutamala Sritti Stiti Laya Mulako Karnama Yunadi. Become the cause of the creation, sustenance and dissolution of everything. All the Bhutas. What he means is uh, the sankalpa, the will, the will to create itself is uh, it's all karma. The will itself is karma. My sankalpa it says is karma, he says, you know. I think you know it's uh, I don't think it's translated, no, Kalyani. It's karma, not... my sankalpa, that's what it's here. Karma, my sankalpa, divine will. Karma, my, my yeah. sankalpa, yeah. it is, it is there. I, I see, but they have translated it as, uh, so the very act of, very resolution of creation is karma. Mm. The very first, which still activates all everywhere, this entire universe and all the movements and agitations, activities in it are direct consequences of the primal karma, my sankalpa divine will. Mm. I think that's the translation. But I think Swami has talked about Sarva Bhuta Mula Srishti Stiti Laya. Mm -hmm. So the, all the living beings and elements, their creation, sustenance and dissolution are caused by the original will, divine will. Brother, mm -hmm. you know the Okay, the last sentence, okay. My will has prompted all karma. That is the creation. Okay. Karma done in consonance with my will becomes part of me. So there are some doesn't go to him, right? That is the one we have to face that consequence. Okay. Whatever done with will is will only will go to him. Thanks. Yeah, I think so. Is See. that is right. Karma done in consonance consonance with my will. Yes. This. So that is there's a one definition. Everything is karma as long as it goes to him only. It's consonant with him only. The rest we have to face the consequence. No, if so one is a selfless love, with that we do everything. That will go to him. But all karma, he says, you know, my will has prompted all karma. You yes. cannot expect this but karma. karma it's going to be part of him only when we done with this. Other than that, it's not going to be a part of him. So in a state of samadhi, if you do any karma, it becomes part of the Lord. I think Brahma karma samadhina. Brahma iva teena gantavyam. Brahma karma samadhina. And that's what Swami is telling. Uh, because if you do it, that it becomes part of. So what? So if it does not become part of the Lord, then it stands separate. And as long as you are separate, you will have to face the consequences of pain and pleasure and everything. Once you become part of the Lord, you are not affected by the dualities of the world. So that is the difference. Um, 
I think that's the way I understand. Aunty. Yeah. I think that's, so that part of the karma done with. Without in, constant, in, not in without concern. Without constants will, will uh, bear fruit for us to go through. The punya papa will all emerge out of it. And those karmas which we do along with the dharmic way, what, what is prescribed, it becomes a part of Bhagavan. Yeah, so Auntie has introduced dharma because the original script was written by the Lord, which is dharma. Okay, so now everyone is on the stage acting. So he has given dharma as the script. So if it is not the dharma, then you have to bear the consequences. It's... If it is part of, if you follow dharma, then it's part of the script. So the Lord is just accept. Yes. Yeah. So Sairam brother, so uh, it's a karma is a difficult part to understand too. So even that if we feel pain <laughs> or happiness, that goes to uh, that that uh, uh, that goes to him too because that even though we think we are taking the pain, but the God is taking the pain. Any action, even uh, even uh, even that uh, Magaparada the last moment that when women was attacking uh, uh, Triyodhana on the thigh, that uh, even Lord Krishna said, I am feeling the pain. So whatever hearing, whatever you feel any pain, it goes to him too. Thank you, Sairam brother. Sairam brother. Uh, Sister Shivani, you have your hand up. Yeah. <coughs> Sai Ram. So, based on the discussion what we are having, uh, I'm just thinking. So, there was a time when Arjuna was in dilemma. He said, "It's not worth for me to go forth if I'm going to the consequences of my act will be where my kith and kins and my gurus, you know, uh, will be killed and all of that." So. Isn't it, it's, it's okay that when he's saying, okay, I'm not going to kill them and I'm taking a back seat and I offer that thought and action to you, to my Lord, and I'm not doing it, but I'm offering that to you. So I'm not moving forward and not doing my act is also I'm offering to you. So, so then it should be okay. I don't know. So See, I think Shivani, sisters, you are not there for, unfortunately. Arjuna would have done better. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think what Shivani, sister Shivani is saying is Arjuna uh, should have offered that his decision not to fight also to Krishna. Krishna. And then he would be free. Is that right? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm offering everything, you know, what? as we discussed, Karma done in consequence, consonance with my Lord. So at that so, moment, so would he sister, say, let me know. Sister, the question is, it should be in consonance with the Lord's will. Uncle, not, I what, not what the individual wants. Uncle, in Telugu, it doesn't say consonance with Lord's will, right? It just says Ishwara Arpana Buddhi. Yes. But doesn't that just mean offering to the Lord? Yes. In consonance with his will. Ishwara is that implied? In consonance with his will yeah, is implied in that? Yeah, so it see what what is offered to the Lord should be what the Lord has asked you to offer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you see, uh, we can't offer something which the it's in, which is not. See, Swami says, if somebody comes home, will you eat, you know, serve the food which they would like to eat, they would eat. You will not give them something which they will not eat. They don't prefer or whatever. So I think just offering means you just can't offer anything and say, oh, I have offered to the Lord. You know, it's like, you know, when some guests come, they don't want to eat and you offer and say, I'm am, I am serving you. Eat, eat. Uh, no, that will not work. Uh, because uh, then that is not offering. Offering is not what I view. I See, the whole problem is I want to do this. This limited self wants to do something. So I'm offering that. That's why Krishna is correcting Arjuna. Arjuna, you are you are offering 
based on your limited understanding you are limiting yourself not even knowing out of a sense of fear grief all that you are offering i don't accept that you be you follow the dharma which has been laid down for you if you are kshatriya you have to fight for dharma offer that to me that has to be offered so we can't just with our limited understanding with our own um, self interests do something with our limited buddhi also and say oh lord please accept it uh, so god will say ah, you have not you have not let go of your ego see letting go of the ego means doing what the lord has told this is what arjuna told arjuna was told krishna is saying do as i say so the, then after that we say oh lord you have said that but i am going to do something but i am offering to you that means uh, we are not in consonance so i th- i don't think we can uh, i don't think krishna would have allowed that to happen <laughs> okay that's my personal view i will open it up for others to come and say uh i'm not just adding to what you were saying so the that way the easiest thing for lord krishna would have been oh kaurava army get destroyed oh pandava army be victorious that's all lord krishna would have had to say and the whole mahabharata would have got over but he went through he himself became a shanti doot or a messenger of peace he went through all every means the whole of lord krishna's life itself from his birth till he who uh, dropped his mortal coil itself was a struggle at every stage that itself says how much lord values karma and because for if we look at what sister shivani was saying that could have been the easiest way for arjuna to put it and then do nothing kind of a thing likewise for lord krishna the ultimate thing would have been okay this happened that happened okay dwapar yuga done but he went through everything so which can imply that though he is lord of the universe it's itself he had to go through every bit of karma and give that whole thing of gita and gita saramsa so that we understand what that karma and how it needs to be done keeping ultimately that ishvara with a buddhi so that it finds culmination in that complete soulful and that joyous offering of love though we may not be fully comfortable but we know this is what swami wants or this is what krishna wants so that ultimately we begin doing that and offer it with all our heart i'm just trying to go a little more from arjuna to lord krishna if he wanted it to be that easy sir 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 thank you sister sister shivani please go just a quick i don't know i'm not conf- i hope i'm not confusing i'm very confusing <laughs> person <laughs> um so okay i'm saying okay this is my as long as you offering to swami then it's okay sister perfect go. okay <laughs> uh okay arjuna had krishna with him yes our sai krishna is within our heart so i'm thinking so we as an individual especially me have to reach to that level or sadhana so much that i'm so confident when i'm talking to my inner voice or talking to swami that is his voice and not giving up my act because sometimes i feel oh i should do that and there's no shivani in that situation but i think this is wrong and you know what this is how it should be and my mind is saying no you are a little more peaceful you have to be a little more peaceful because situation might be kind create something uh, and it might be unpleasant for other people and it's not a selfish act what i'm i'm just creating a situation but i'm taking uh, as an agent of peace and i step back so i'm thinking where is the lord i mean how i hear that voice that where i'm saying no this is your karma go forward uh, of course you have to offer to him don't worry about the consequences rather than be an agent of like peacemaker i don't know if, does it make sense i'm i'm talking about real situation yeah, so good i think it's a good question this i think let me uh, try to see whether i understood the question So what you're saying is there's a voice inside me telling what I should do. Which yes. is the Lord's yeah. voice. Yeah. How will I listen to that? I think that's the question you ask. Yeah. Okay. The thing is and how will we know that we are listening to the voice of the Lord? 
yes. and not to something else? I think that's the question. Am I right? Yes, yes. Okay. The thing is, the Lord he say, you cannot with uh, you said sadhana. See, uh, I think we all think you know every day the Lord has to be keeping on telling us what to do in every given situation. Technically, and, yeah. Yeah, that's what people say. I I did meditation. I you know Swami came and told me this. You know, this is uh, generally all devotees having a <laughs> lot of conversations with the Lord. But the Lord will say, I have already told you what you have to do. Mm. What new things you are waiting to listen? I have already told you. So how do you, then you will say, Oh, I don't know what the Lord has. Then we have to find out what the Lord has told. See, this is why what the Lord has taught is the Veda. You know, it, he has already taught. But see, we want something special. And then we will go and ask the Lord, uh, you know, you may have told this, but you know, I think mm. already we are gone. You know, we are already gone. The, the way to see is if the Lord has said something, we need to be very clear and understand what the Lord has asked. It's all, it's all written. He has already stated. He has we are reading Vahini because to understand that. So the thing is, until we find out what do we do, I think that's the second question you will ask. You know, when we don't know what to do, find out. We all have to find out. Uh, because, you know, if we have to go somewhere and uh, uh, apply for a passport or something like that. If I sit and say, okay, let me find out what I have to, how I have to phone, you know, I will never get a passport. I will have to go to the passport office, find out what the form had to fill out the and give. So the thing is, information is all out there. Uh, so, but the thing is, until we come to a stage where we can connect with the Lord internally, we have to depend on what's already stated by the Lord as the things which we should do. If we are looking for something new, then the Lord will say, why have you said all this? And you are not paying any attention to that. So this thinking that there's an inner voice, see inner voice only will be, I think, um, your conscience, which will say you are doing something wrong. I think to that extent, I think all of us have some conscience which will tell us that we are doing something wrong. Now, that's my understanding. I will stop here, sister. I don't know whether I've further confused you, but I will stop here. I will ask others to share their thoughts. Brother, uh, here Swami clearly said that all the karma will be prompted by him. That means every action your conscience will tell you whether you are doing right or not. Mm -hmm. But whatever you are doing, the concerns with the God's will, that only going to be part of him. But anything that you go against your conscious or something, because he is prompting, but you have to give a thought for that and do the right thing, what your conscious says. That's all. So thank you, Saira. That's my answer. Thank, thank, thank you very much. So, Sairam brother, just uh, another way to identify, just put your words and thoughts, deeds align, any actions, then it will tell you the uh, it is aligned with the consensus or not. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Sister Shivani again. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it, it does make sense because why i'm saying is that many times last couple of years what how i am practicing is and exactly what you are saying is that you know what i'm hearing is is just are we manipulating because it should work or we are doing contemplation what you know when we go through after the study circle the lots of contemplation lots of thinking conversation with the lord is very important not just to go forward is is, is when I think that this is this is a right act, this is what I should do, how it should do, and I'm going to go forward with that saying or doing something, but at the same time, I sit in front of him and say, okay, this is what I think I should do, but if it's this is not your will, then create some barriers, create some situations that I don't move forward. And it has happened that he has created and then I just let go. I then don't think about and ponder on it. Oh, I should have done, I should go back. Then it's that that thought, I just put it aside. So 
as you said, yes, it, it's a lot of, um, you know, contemplation is very, very, very important and not to put uh, your and manipulate it and they say, okay, I think this is how it is. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Silence is there. I, uh, Brother, can I ask you one more question on that? That when your uh, conscious prompt you what is right, and because you you cannot say something, your situation or surrounding, is that is correct? Or oh, that we are it is consonant with the will. That's my just I'm thinking to myself. Is that, is, can you repeat the question, sister? This is the way right thing, but you are thinking about other things and you are keeping quiet. Does it goes with the consonants? So what you're saying is you have to say something, mm -hmm. but you're not saying that. Mm -hmm. Keeping thinking... myself, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that is, um, when you're saying that uh, on the, you are wanted to say the right thing, but you don't see that will go in the right way and keep it quiet. Is that is right to avoid the world is problem you are trying to keep it quiet but your conscious says this is right but you are not openly saying it like i'm trying to understand is that is we keeping quiet also is the right thing no see, your conscious says yeah, yeah. so see i may not answer that question directly i think one of the problem we all have is we want the best outcome okay we want the best outcome. So what uh, we want to maximize the profit. And if you want to put it that way, we don't want to lose anything. We don't want to lose people. We don't want to lose others opinion. We don't want to lose financial resources, whatever. So sometimes when, as long as we think the action is based on a, a particular outcome, then we are gone. Okay. Um, but if, if it's based just on the instructions by the Lord, then we are right. See, sometimes the mind is trying to say, oh, if you do this, maybe this will happen. Uh, you know, people may feel upset or whatever. Uh, as soon as we, uh, our decision is outcome based, not based on what is prescribed by the Lord, then I think we, we, we go into this fear where we are not in consonant with what the Lord is want. So uh, the best way is just follow blindly, you know, to some extent, what the Lord has said. Uh, you know, I think that's... So, you, know, you have to follow your conscience all the time. Yes. When, what it, the, when you get afraid of anything, that means um, you are not concentrated. You, you, you are not giving the food. So, just uh, if you think you are doing right and you are aligned with what Swami is saying, then do it. That's the way of doing. That's how I look at it. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, Sister. Anyone else would like to share? So, I was just going to stay for Sister Aruna's thing. Uh, first, like, we need to know whether it is the voice of the conscience or it is our own mind that is playing tricks. Because many times with what we do for us to be, like if I have to be absolutely clear, it is the Swami within who is speaking versus something that is just being manipulated by my mind, that we have to really pray or use our intellect to really understand what it is. Because only then the rest of the thing follows. And like what uh, Anna was mentioning, if it is really Swami's voice that is coming, then it will be, there will be only one and not two. It will not be do this so that this will happen. Because when the mind comes, you automatically, you start thinking two. That is, if I do this, then this will happen. So if there is a sequence, that means it is bound to the action and reaction which means expectations are also tied onto it. So it leads to that whole thing of consequences. Whereas if it's really Bhagwan's thing coming from within, then it is just one, do this. That is the instruction. 
there is nothing beyond that if you do this because all that if you do this this will happen and all that is the analysis of the mind that is coming so first itself to be clear whether it is the voice of the conscience or the tricks of the mind and then the subsequent thing of what's to be done and if it is selflessly again based on that pure thing of swami's instruction and divine love then the cascade of events can happen if not we ourselves know how to contain it sir thank, thank you sir so much Just, can i add something yes, uh, yes, a quick thing yes, something which is helping me i don't know and exactly what brother said that if it's a reaction of any situation because every action when we react there might be emotions we might be unreasonable and there will be me in that reaction but i have learned and practicing is still not there yet when we are responding responding means we are we are respecting others person what they have done but you are responding to the situation this is how you perceive and this is how i think which takes little thinking in the sense you know i'm, I'm you take away your emotion so don't react but respond and i felt uh, there no i no hurt feeling you're not letting other people feel down because you're respecting the person but at the same time you're expressing this is how the situation this is just how i distinguish reaction respond and to be not emotional but respectful when i'm expressing my myself sign up thank you very much sister thank you i would like to just add another twist you know in in terms of what is the right thing to do uh, the measurement yardstick to measure whether something is right uh, i think swami has spoken about it there are three pramanas pramanas means they are the stipulations so measurements by which you measure and realize one is pratyaksha second one is anumana the third one is shabda there are three uh, measurements pratyaksha anumana and shabda pratyaksha means what you see with your eyes and senses that can be a measure for any action um so for example if you want to touch something if it's hot or something like that you know it is that itself will tell you don't touch this don't because if you do that you will get hurt you know that's what physically you can the second one is anumana you can imagine now oh, if this is happens then that may happen and so on okay speculation to some extent you can see or even mentally re, uh, inferring inference what, inference Infer inferring something this if this happened that will happen if that happened you know inference the third one is shabda which is what the lord has said what is in the vedas the shastras scriptures scriptures so the thing is even if you go with pratyaksha or anumana the ultimate test is whether it is in the shabda the, the, the shastra should have that so so you can only do anumana and come up with something which is sanctioned by the shastras they should authorize you as action which is right so within what is in the shastras you can figure out what you have to do through anumana to apply for a particular occasion but whatever we do cannot go counter to what is already in the shastras then that is not accepted so ultimate test is has the lord said that we can do this is the ultimate test Uh, within that then we have to look look at pratyaksha and anumana apply as the situation needs um, i thought i will just add that this i hope that's okay auntie is that uh, yeah, correct correct what you are saying is correct <coughs> mr shivani your hands are still up so i don't know whether <laughs> that that was anumana that's pratyaksha i am seeing no i will have so many questions until i reach to that level but i put it down for now <laughs> that's a lifetime hands up what if this what if this <laughs> samshayatma samshayatma <laughs> aunt you didn't complete the sentence no i did not want to <laughs> okay. um, so If, are good. there any other points which anyone want to share? And so, um, even though our understanding may not be complete, as long as we feel that we are doing the right thing, is that good enough in terms of making an offering to the Lord? 
I think you uh, you have answered your question and I think you know the answer. You, you use the word feel. You know, but as long as it's sanctioned by what something which the Lord has prescribed and then it's okay. Well, you may not be able to find that for every life situation, right? Like, I think there are some basic things which Swami has said, which I think universally applicable. Um, I think until, but I think that uh, very rightly pointed out, Kalyani, that is where we, our, we have to seek knowledge to find out what the Lord wants us to do. And I think once we have a certain element, certain amount of understanding, See, if you are a doctor, so I will ask you, a patient has come in, okay? You had to prescribe something. You don't know, you don't have the answer today. Mm. Would you prescribe based on what you feel is right? Or no. will you find out? <laughs> I would find, find out. out. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that, nothing more. I don't have to say anything more. If you, if you are going to prescribe with feelings, then I think, you know, you know, you can you can decide based on what is in the literature. Mm -hmm. Okay, what what you have studied, you know, what the pharmacopoeia, oh. whatever. So, feeling means it's better not to do anything. Okay, you will postpone until you have for a fact that you have a few options, and you will within those options you will come up. You know, these are the symptoms which I am able to observe, and this sort of matches. You know, what is already prescribed. I am going to prescribe this. Action, karma is exactly the same thing. You know, you don't have a choice. That is why study of sci literature of scriptures is essential for everyone. Otherwise, why? We don't need to. And Swami has given simple rules and he has given expanded, elaborate rules for every situation. But for that, we have to study. We have to really understand. I don't think there is, uh, you know, no, you know, uh, we can't say ignorance is no excuse but for uncle, anything. So, uncle, uh, like, because I think, like, Swami, you know, his teachings are for, I guess, a variety of people. Like, for example, Swami has said multiple times how progeny, having children, is not the purpose of life. It's not going to, it, it's just like adding more legs, you become slower. So, does that mean no one should have children, though? No, he has not, it's not, that's not the purpose. Started. Okay, that should not be all consuming purpose. Okay, I think that's what it is. But is it part of well, yes, it is part of Grastashma, it is because Swami will say you get children so that you contribute uh, uh, good for citizens for the society, and that is a duty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, brother Dasa. Uh, uh, Sairam, brother, that's the reason even Lord uh, the created four varnas too. Even if we take Sai Center or any spiritual places, everyone has some kind of talent. Someone can be very good singing, someone can uh, play dollar, some puns. So uh, Lord has not given all the talent. Even uh, someone be a teacher, someone going to be a carpenter. So you have to do your duty uh, 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 without any mistakes and everything, uh, without any attachment. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. So, Uncle, like, so say this is a hypothetical situation, like, like somebody's contemplating having children, but then if they go to the Veda, Swami's literature, and they try to find the answer to that, the answer they will get is, no, no, no. It's not going to lead you to. Don't take it in that way. Don't, never, Swami never said that. No, but Swami clearly said that. Wait, I've never seen Swami say, have children, so, ever. It's not, the whole purpose of life will not be the only producing children. That's what he yeah. wants to. That's the only reason. Um, you know, go on producing children, go on pro, 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 increasing the progeny is not the purpose of our life. There are better things. <laughs> so for strictly following what Swami has said, you have then, to take it. Then so I guess in my understanding, that's what I understood that, you know. So, so the, really... I think, uh, Kalyani, you are right. See, Swami has prescribed for anyone who wants to get married and you know, raise a family, Swami has given instructions. That means Grastashrama Dharma is, you know, is prescribed. 
what should a parent do what should the mother do what you know how you should look after he has given the prescription but if not but the thing is whatever we do we should do it for the benefit of the society not for an individual satisfaction so if once you we take that anything which we do whether we are in grastashrama which is basically household stage you marry you have children um, once that has happened then you have to follow that you know once you, a decision is made see once uh, you get married then there is a role right away you have signed up for it then you have to follow that dharma at that point you can't say i am going to change it now then that doesn't work okay so the thing is the next stage you okay you had to have children uh, marriage is just not for you know enjoying pleasure so you had to raise children you bring up children then there is a set of rules which he has given how a mother should look after so once we are in the circumstances within that circumstance we have to do what we have to but if you have not if you have outside of getting into the grass ashram at that time you can decide oh, i am going to dedicate my life for helping the world in this capacity that's okay so the thing is it, all of us will when we go and read we are already already going to find ourselves in some circumstance whether we may be single we may be married we may have children we may have grandchildren it doesn't really matter at that point in time we can't change the circumstances okay within that circumstances swami has given ample guidance okay so i think that's the reality and he has not strictly if actually if we read dharmavahini says he is not saying he is saying in every varna every ashrama you can attain god okay that is possible but if you but you should know what is the stage of life you are in and what what is the state in which you are in once you know that then you can, there's enough swami has given you know enough guidance but whatever we do swami says don't think of yourself as the body don't think you know your family and children are what matters that can always change don't be affected by whatever happens to you personally or to your family around uh, don't worry about the success and failures do everything as offering to the lord as prescribed by the lord following dharma for the benefit of human kind you know this i don't think we all of us can go wrong once we follow some of this so swami uh, does not say don't have children he doesn't say don't get married no he says if that if you have a desire to get married you might as well get married but then that's you know, not really for following what swami says right that's just following our desire is it not no ashrama even ashrama dharma is also prescribed by the lord mm -hmm. maya uh, chaturvarnam maya system it is his creation so grahastha ashrama is also part of his creation and we have to by having taken up grahastha ashrama the duties of our uh, uh, parents as parents we have to we have to stick to it right but like go you were saying how like once you've chosen you can't really change but you still have choice within the grahastha ashrama you can have 10 kids or you can have one kid. Only one like, kid. Yes, yes. so like in those small small decisions of life i guess we're not going to find the answers in like reading swami's literature will we like we'll, yes. we won't we will it is, it is there but swami can't there? say that for every person there will be a different answer no no he for like how many children you should have like those kind general of guidance he has given you know <laughs> then you know some of it is you know if it's common sense also you know at some at, at some level uh you know uh, why are you having the children? For what purpose? I think all these are questions one has to ask. So he has, there are enough principles which he has elucidated, which we, all of us can use. Okay. Uh, because there are pros and cons for every decision. Uh, I, it's, it's, I think your question is, he has given the principles which can be applied by us in every given situation. And that is that level of uh, freedom is given by Swami to each of each one of us. Yeah. So the Dasan, I will, I think yes. 327, you yeah. can share. Uh, we can continue the discussion and we can yes. contemplate on this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so Sairam brother, according to the progeny, if you, if you want to have even 10 kids, you can have 10 kids as far as you can manage those 10 kids. If we can, without the attachment, if we can do the karma, good karma, 
then you're going to reach the ultimate goal. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Saira. Uh, I think it's 328. I, I don't think we are going to, okay, I think some of these will come again later on in the volume yeah. also, but uh, we can discuss. Um, I think 328, so we'll close today's session. Yeah. Um, I think we all can think of whether, you know, how each of our karma can be made to become the Lord. Uh, so, okay, Saira. Thank you, and we'll close with Samastha Loka Saira. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Jai Saira Jai Saira Thank you.